Hi folks, Wally Johnson here and on today's adventure we're gonna go explore an old abandoned farmhouse. It's on some parkland over here and uh, joining me on today's adventure is Maddie. Hey Maddie, say hi Maddie. Maddie, there she is. Maddie's a border collie. Okay, we're gonna be going down this little lane here. There's some more little trails in, in there. But uh, at the end of this lane is the abandoned farmhouse. There it is up ahead. Maddie sees it. Now it's been incorporated into uh, City Park. And uh, unfortunately, it is boarded up. So we can't get into it. Although I suspect it would be pretty uh, pretty boring inside. It's not extremely big. But uh, well, it's a fair size actually. Got a, got a good size medium family in there. It's made of limestone as you can see here. Peter Wartman house and they say it was constructed in 1803 and this is a uh, heritage plaque so the house is uh, protected uh, from uh, demolition because it's now a historic site it's not really being used for anything but um, the plaque says 1803 but uh, my research online says it kind of came to its form in the 1840s. There were several different structures uh, here beforehand. Um, the original folks that came up here came in the 1790s. They were loyalists escaping the American Revolution. So I learned from some locals that this area here coming out from the house was the summer kitchen, which uh, was probably added later on. And uh, there was a basement access to the house, which is down there, which has been stoned up, covered up, uh, much later, I think. And one of the reasons they think that this, uh, this part of the, the summer kitchen was added later is it actually covers up a bit of the, the doorway to the basement. And, uh, yeah, it just seems, that's interesting. Yeah, so here, this confirms my uh, suspicion. The plaque out front says eight, 1803, but then this one says 1840. Uh, I think this version of the house was built in the 1840s, but um, there, was, there was always a, a house in one form or another here since the uh, 1790s. Uh, and there was, uh, I think, the first stone version came in in 1803. Prior to that, it would have been wood. And of course, that's long since gone. Now we're just going in to this little patch of wood right beside the house, and it's part of the park. Um, and you know, people have been kind of bushwhacking and making little trails in here uh, unofficially and then officially. But kids have gotten in here and they've done something interesting here. <laughs> Let's just check this out. So, whether you agree with this or not, what they've done here is they've kind of turned it into a, looks like a, an off-road bike. I'm not talking motorbikes, we're just talking um, you know, BMXs and such that are, uh, and they ride, they put a little, looks like some ramps over there. And then they've made some make, makeshift ramps out of dirt so they can jump them. Oh, there's another one up there. 
I've actually seen that. I haven't seen them riding here, but I've seen the kids in their bikes just lying around here. So it's kind of a shame because I remember coming here a few years back and it wasn't this kind of uh, worn out. You know? But anyhow, they've. But there's something very interesting over here. Let's check it out. Now, what I believe this area was, was a garden for the house. And if you look right in here, you can see the kids have kind of made a kind of a dirt kind of ramp that where they can kind of just go around. But down here, this seems to be a concrete uh, fish pond of some sort. And it's, you know, strewn with these decorative rocks. So that would have been pretty cool. I could imagine it would have been, maybe had some kind of kois or goldfish in it. Would have been surrounded by flowers, uh, which doesn't surprise me because I've been coming into this park here for years. And before the kids got in here, you can see there's all sorts of evidence of some sort of uh, a rock garden here where they built mounds very purposely. And, uh, you know, they would have taken these from the field and they just put them, if they didn't make them into walls, somebody, uh, somebody put a lot of time into this years ago. Okay, here's a little interesting thing that's just off of, uh, a little further away from the main house. There's the foundation of a, another building, maybe a... barn or something part of a garage there's the main house up there is that another outbuilding oh geez it could be an outhouse for all I know <laughs> yeah yeah the park goes on a bit further down there there's some benches here and there when I ever come to these places I always uh, I always kind of keep in the back of my mind, would it make a good stealth camping area? Now I've been here for years, so I've already made up my mind about this place. And the, the answer is no, because it's, uh, it's too public, it's too popular. Particularly on the weekends, it's very popular. And uh, yeah, and you'd think looking at this, Right in there would be the perfect kind of stealth camp area. But uh, it's not really. Because if you look, <clears throat> it seems to be ideal. You could pitch a tent under here, but you know, kids have built a little fort in here and they've done all sorts of stuff. And uh, oh, there's Maddie. So, they're in here all the time. And we're not too far from, uh, we've come for full circle. The, that fish pond I was mentioning is just over there. And, uh, oh, oh, look. Here comes somebody. Oh, there they go. So that's a reason it's not good for stealth camping. Very popular with dog walkers, you know. <laughs> the worst place to be as a stealth camper. Look at this, isn't that cool? Let's, let's get on the other side of that and check that out. Yeah, you see the kids have kids have done they built all this stuff here to make a, a fort. Yeah, that's a kind of thing I would have loved to have done when I was when I was a kid. There we go. There we go. A crude shelter at best, but uh, yeah. Oh, it looks like they were thinking of a campfire. Doesn't look like they lit it, but they were thinking about it.
here's something they won't tell you in the history books. And that is that this place was the site of a grisly triple ax murder that never was solved. And to this day, people say it's haunted. And the reason you don't hear it, hear about it in the history books is because it never happened. I'm just making it up. I'm just fooling with you guys. However, I do have a bit of a ghost story for you. And it was one that I witnessed, or I kind of witnessed, or I witnessed somebody else witnessing it. And it happened just down here. So, uh, and I will fill you in on the details later. Let's go check it out. Now, one of the things I was going on about the, the old farmhouse there was saying, uh, oh, it's haunted or whatever. I don't know if it's haunted or not. I mean, when we were kids, some, some people wanted to go check it out. I guess there was easier access of it and stuff just because it's old and it's creepy. I have no idea. Now, having said that, uh, as I have mentioned, I have been coming here for years, years. It's a, a local park, decades in fact, walking various dogs. And on one of those walks, something very interesting did happen. And it happened right behind me here. I, I, quite, I can't quite remember. And a lot of the trees have grown up since then. But uh, it was something very strange. Which, uh, which I witnessed, but only kind of, not really. And the reason I say that, and one of the reasons I'm bringing Maddie along, is because uh, I had one of my dogs at the time. This would have been about 25 years ago, mid to early 90s. And uh, the strangest thing happened. The strangest thing happened. This dog, right over here somewhere we'll get we'll get a little bit closer um, just started barking at thin air like like off into nothingness like that I think there was an old stump near there but she wasn't barking down at the stump she was looking up and I just went that is extraordinary and of course the first thing I'm thinking is god she can see uh, see a ghost or something because you know Apparently, you know, dogs have all that sort of extra perception stuff. You know, they can detect, you know, when you're going to have a seizure and all those sort of things. So who's to say that dogs don't have that kind of power? Like this one. Although she's not really doing anything. She's just doing normal dog stuff. But, uh, yeah. Let's go over and check out where I, where I saw that. Okay, I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was. Uh, firstly, the trees have really grown up. So, uh, yeah, and also because we did have some very high water levels in the last two years, there's been a lot of erosion, as you can see right here. The water levels have returned to normal, but they were pretty high and they just uh, really did dig in there. Oh, she seems to be, maybe we're in the right area. Anyways, um, and these trees, so it was about 25, 26, maybe even 27 or eight years ago. I, um, it was in and around here. So the dog would have been there and she was looking up. So there's nothing out there. There's just, there's just water out there. And she, it wasn't like she was barking in at a downward. She was barking up, looking up. So it was very strange. And uh, now I didn't, of course, personally see anything other than my dog's, you know, uh, strange behavior. And uh, yeah, it was somewhere around here. I think there was a stump. At one point there was some, a tree that had fallen in here. These ones are fairly, those are, those are quite young and the one in the middle, maybe, um, certainly wouldn't have been the size that they are now, uh, 26 years ago, but, uh, yeah, Maddie seems to be, oh, she's only really interested where I'm going. <laughs>
Oh well. Here you can see from the waterfront that area where the ghost was seen, right up there, or where the dog saw the ghost. Speaking of dogs, there's Maddie. And uh, it doesn't surprise me that this would have been an area of activity because uh, the waterfront would have been uh, quite the hub of transportation back in the 19th century. And if you're looking out, that's Lake Ontario. And further in the distance there, that's uh, Simcoe Island, where I'm pointing to. Now, uh, I don't know if that was the ghost of Peter Wartman or perhaps another spirit that resided in the house. I just don't know. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little tour of this, uh, this old 19th century farmhouse. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna call it quits for now. Uh, that's for me and Maddie, who's right there. Say hi, Maddie. Yeah, there we go, that's good enough. Anyways, thank you so much for joining and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, turn on your notifications. Okay, take care. Wally J out. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. Ooh, good girl. You found a friend. Later.